five unloved features of Ableton. So the first one that I'm gonna talk about is Corpus and its MIDI sidechain capabilities. Let's grab a sample. Let's grab this drum break. <laughs> um, let's make it so it's not so fast. Loop out. And we'll put corpus on this. Maybe set it to tube. And then if you look up in the top left corner here in corpus, you'll see this little triangle. If you click that, it'll have this MIDI from selection. So you can actually send MIDI to corpus from any MIDI channel. And you can do this on a MIDI channel as well. But um, yeah, you can create a little MIDI loop. I'm just going to try and imagine what this will sound like, but it might not sound great. We'll see. And then we'll select that channel for the MIDI input and then press frequency and you'll see it lights up and then yeah let's make the MIDI notes a bit higher why is that happening oh, I had it solo that's why <laughs> So you can kind of create like bass lines with drums with this. Okay, so yeah, I'm sure you can think of many ways you could apply this. So let's say you have a synth. And you want to make this, um, you know, have corpus on it, but you want it in key. You could just. There you have a normal sa saw wave. And then if you have your corpus with that input, you can make it sound way more interesting. Next one is chain selectors and racks. So let's say you want to have more variation. You could have two different racks, two different synths, maybe. And then, yeah, you can have different chains for uh, controlling different parts or different synths. So to make this more apparent, yeah, the harder I press, selects which different synth I can use. So I'm sure you can think of different ways that you could use this but yeah you can have different effects on different synths and you can also route the chain in different ways so say you want it to d associate it with which key it's in you can do that or you can even have this chain selector thing that you can kind of like fade between the two So yeah, if you take that to its extreme, you can do loads of crazy stuff. The same for goes for 
effect racks and um, MIDI effect racks. And MIDI effect racks is actually really useful. So say you have uh, an arpeggiator. Say you want like the arpeggiator only to kick in when you um, press really hard on the keyboard. Then you can have it so you have a, a chain that's dry with no MIDI effect. And then your whatever MIDI effect you want. And then, yeah, you can select it. make it so the velocity of this can control different rates. And yeah, effect racks as well. I've gone into this a little bit in other videos, but say you want two different effects, reverb, and let's say a saturator. I don't know, I'm just putting random on. chain. Yeah, you can have a little chain selector thing here. So you can fade between the two. It's kind of tricky to grab the top. There it is. Yeah, you see that top little white bar? That's where you can uh, control the fade. So if I top, yeah. And the only problem with this chain selector fade thing is it's not constant power. It's linear, but um, it doesn't matter for what. Um, yeah, it's, it would be great if you could control the fade curves so you can make a constant power fader, but you can't do that. So if you map this to a macro, maybe. And go through different effects with that chain selector. So yeah, effect racks, MIDI effect racks instrument of uh, racks they're all super useful and yeah not many people like to delve into their capabilities so let's see groove presets so this one was kind of new to me so you have your groove library here if you br browse your browse your groove library you'll be able to pull up a bunch of these stock grooves and what you can actually do is create your own by any any sample, any MIDI, whoops, any you can extract grooves from them. So you can extract a groove from here. And there you have a groove based on this the various timings of this, but here it's pretty straight, so it doesn't really um, demonstrate what I'm how useful this can be. So as well as audio, you can take it from MIDI. So let's create a new MIDI track. Uh, let's All right. So even let's just make a one beat loop. And yeah, let's just create some random MIDI notes. off the grid so we can create a little groove out of this. And then you can extract the groove from that, rename it, whatever. <sighs> and go to your user library and in grooves you can just put it in there. And it will be there forever and you can use it on whatever you want. For instance, so let's just create a straight loop of sixteenth notes just to demonstrate what it's doing. That's a bit too fast.
and then you set the groove to whatever. <laughs> You have a toggleable um, groove that you can then automate with this global amount. It's a shame you can't automate these individually, but you can automate the, this global amount, and that'll um, change the global amount, or so it should. <laughs> So the really powerful thing about this is that you can set this um, whatever routed, and you can attach that groove to as many clips as you want. And you can control the groove amount, and all those MIDI clips will move. Doesn't matter how many you have, they'll all move with that. So that's pretty powerful. Next, we're going to do slicing presets. So I didn't actually know until today that you could create slicing presets. So when you um, slice a sample, just slice to new MIDI track, you have these built-in um, these built-in slicing presets, and they're a lot of them are really weird, like not very sensible. Um, like this built-in zero velocity one. It's cool, but I mean, I'd like to have control over like the pitch, and you'd have to like unmap all of these, and every time you do that, it just gets really an annoying. So you can actually create your own uh, slicing presets. So say you want a blank preset, all you have to do is go into create a MIDI track and then create a drum rack. Now, I've tried it with different um, stock plugins, and it only works with simpler and sampler. So you select w whether you want, um, or you can actually just make a sampler if you create a, a, MIDI, a MIDI channel, and then, yeah. And then just go to your user library, which is down here. And then go to default slicing. You can actually drag whatever this is. So let's rename it to just blank. And now if I slice this, go to build in, it'll already be there because um, yeah, it automatically sees it blank. And then, yeah, you have a blank. I forgot to um, unmap the key, but yeah. And yeah, if you want to create your own with a drum rack, all you have to do is select whether you want a sampler or simpler to be your sampler. <laughs> yeah, you basically, one instance, one instance of sampler, and you just control which uh, things you want. And the cool thing about this is you can actually load effects. Like, say you want a compressor on each drum uh, instance when you slice it. You can actually add effects. And I didn't actually know you could do that until today. So say we want a compressor on each channel, and we want um, to be able to control the pitch, map that to macro 1. Control the threshold there, ratio, attack, release. So that's all in the uh, macro controls. And then let's rename this to whatever. <laughs> and drag it into your slicing presets. And now, when you slice to new MIDI track, and select whatever. Each instance will have a compressor on it that's mapped to that macro control. And it does that automatically. And yeah, you have control over the pitch of each instance and everything.
add as many effects as you want. But I highly don't recommend like adding loads of reverbs or delays or anything. Um, I tried that, and I've got a pretty powerful computer, and it completely <laughs> maxed out my CPU. So don't do that. I guess I yeah should mention that it's not actually a feature of Ableton, but this little add-on that you can get, uh, the Live Enhancement Suite, comes up as a little menu. You can double right-click to <laughs> pull up a little menu that you can customize. And it, you can put effects in there. You can put um, your racks in there. You can put samples in here if you want. You can put anything in here, um, as long as it's search searchable with Control F. So yeah, go check them out. I'll put a link down in the description. Any suggestions from the chat? Oh, I, I think I know one. First of all, if you record audio on your phone, some of you may know that <coughs> the audio does not uh, read the audio format that your phone usually outputs at, if it's, especially if it's an iPhone, is not um, compatible with Ableton. So if you send a, 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 um, a, an audio note to yourself, you have to then convert it, and it's a long ass process. So you can actually just take a video, and video the video format in Ableton is supported by, or sorry, the video format of a, a, an iPhone video is supported in Ableton. So yeah, you can just like, let's take a little video. You can just take a video and then chop it up. And then I'll send that to myself. You have to. The only problem with video in Ableton is it's really buggy. It sometimes crashes things, but yeah. You can just take a video and then chop it up. You can just take a video and then chop it up. As you can see, it's really glitchy. You can just take a video and then chop it up. <laughs> what? Chop it up, 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 chop. Yeah, you got the point. All right, well, I think that's it for this stream. So, yeah, thank you for watching.